So let me know when you hit record. I did. So welcome to the risk meeting, March 18th, 2021. Uh, starting out by looking at issues and pull requests. We've got one from Matt Snell. Um, there. Uh, just a little formatting change. And I think of files on the OSI license list. So I think you just made that a bit more clear. I, I see no reason not to merge this pull request. It looks just like uh, making what we're doing, what this metric is a bit more clear. I'm gonna take no conversation as no disagreement. Yeah, when you merge it, can you tag Kevin just because I, I think this one doesn't need to go back out for community review. No. Just, just so folks know, normally when we make like a metrics change, um, if it's a big change, we go back out for review, but grammar things or small edits don't necessarily need to do that. All right, so we merged that pull request. That should help our pull request merge statistics. Already got one down. Uh, current state of risk metrics. This is that spreadsheet. This one here. Were there no issues that needed attention? No, they were all. Um, they were all like release notes was the last one, and the others are. I think related really to the work that we're working on. Okay. Dependency. And I don't want to use, I think there's probably some cleanup that I can do offline and take as an action item for some of these older ones. And All right, I'll put that for you as an action item. I appreciate that, Matt. And so, uh, the current state of the risk metrics is we kind of have this um, we have our MVP list and and so we had started work oh, uh, go this ahead. was this was different the the link that is in there is the link to the spreadsheet to this spreadsheet yeah Oh, okay. So, all right. So I, I put the wrong, I put the wrong link in here. Uh, current state. Yeah, that is the current state. Um, <laughs> in a sense, uh, but you know, uh, this is, you know, really this would be, um, I would call it, this is badly worded. This is like current risk metric MVPs most okay. most uh -huh. minimum viable product i always well, that, yeah. sean that link is to the that sh that link is to the metrics spreadsheet right i know and so i'm going to place it with the correct link to this okay link. well i had put it in there to, to the metric spreadsheet so that we could talk through oh okay the risk metrics <laughs> you're, you're subtly deleting my <laughs> Okay, sorry. Uh, all right, and so very casually removing my item. Um, so, so what I so uh, we also have our MVP spreadsheet, which I think is closely related. Um, so let's go in that order. The MVP spreadsheet's kind of a list of what we've been working on. So this spreadsheet is our overall listed metrics that we're working on under risk. And there's a number of them. And so in an effort to focus them, so why don't, I don't know, do you wanna walk through this one, Matt? Yeah, so I had a couple. It? Okay. Yep. So Go there were a couple things that I wanted to bring up on this. Um, okay. So one was, it, see rows 29 and 31, number of dependencies in the lib year mm -hmm. one. We had started by putting those in business risk, but we've also now created focus areas around dependencies. So I was wondering if those are better suited to be 
Um, one of the things I'm almost wondering, yeah. So if, if we've got Yamovitz yeah, dependencies, since we've got somewhere in there, just for I'll look at this. Yeah. So that's yeah, those are the, 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 yeah. Or else, are they putting, or possibly even putting it under code quality? I just, I had wondered if we just wanted to collapse all dependency things into I'd, the two. Or, or quite frankly, just create one great big dependencies and just have the metrics upstream and yeah. down in there and then just kind of in that one giant focus area that actually, might be a little bit cleaner i think number of dependencies and libya dependencies may actually be okay well i guess we got specific in upstream and downstream and but we do have libya down here as well so that's in a sense that's actually a repeat mm -hmm. so why don't we just delete and, it then no there's more data here <laughs> or, okay well then move it based on top of it then yeah, I'm going right. to copy the cells that are actually a bit more current down here before we delete that line. Unbold it. And then we can delete this line. And then the other one was now 29 number of dependencies so we've we've really what we kind of did is we've broken this down on a sound use word it's more it's more granular to the two and there's really nothing in this yeah there's nothing here to, to lose so um we have oops, number of dependencies we have this down below here as downstream dependency count and I thought, I thought we had upstream dependency count. Oh yeah, like up, so we have, we have slightly different language, but the, essentially they are the enumeration of dependencies that is in this line, but broken out by upstream and downstream. So row 71 should move to the upstream projects or it should remain in the downstream? 71? Yes. Well, I mean, I mean, they're two different. So we'd started to work, I believe, on. Mm -hmm. I'm saying down. like it's a upstream dependency, but we have uh, put it in the downstream dependency project section. Oh, have That's we? What I have. Do we have it reversed? I do that all the time. Yeah. So this is. Honestly, maybe to Kate's point, we we just we can just say dependencies as a focus area. Well, there were different. There's different things we need to do to measure each of them. Sure. Um, let's see what this. Goes. But like in in DNI or DEI, you know, event event DEI is just one focus area, and there are a lot of things that we can take a look at. Oh, oh, in, in that yeah, focus thought, area. Okay, I'm sorry. I was thinking that the yeah, this is just dependency. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. Okay. In fact, upstream and downstream are actually in downstream right <laughs> now. Strangely enough. So yeah. I, maybe. For a merge, what I would just do is delete seven right now, like uh, seventy-eight. Yes. And then I and, and just delete 78 and then it's all together yes. and then just delete the duplicates. Okay. Yeah. Correct. I think that's fast. <laughs> and then renumber, you know, eight to be uh, and quite Seven. frankly, I'd even, I'd even take out the dependency risk for security and just lump that all in. Okay. Um, Agreed. Well, and, until and then, I tell you what, until we have a specific dependency risk for security, let's leave that there to remind us that's a different thing. Okay. Then um, if you want to just say dependency risk assessment and just remove the downstream in online. Oh, I see. Uh, where is dependency risk assessment? Line 70. I did it. Oh, did. oh well done, Matt. <laughs> okay. <Thank you. laughs> and then, all right. And then delete, delete seven. Yes. <laughs> oh, I did, I did not delete seven. I'll delete this dependency risk assessment. 
Uh, right, so now this is better because I think we have one focus area for dependency concerns. Yes, squeaky yeah. clean, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we can- We've been doing our spring cleaning, <laughs> Sophia. Yes, points. exactly, so this is too. just <laughs> totally spring cleaning. Did somebody say that? <laughs> yes, yeah. it is like spring cleaning. <laughs> I'm going to create cool. just a, a just put dependency that, that, security that, that, risks. That, that makes sense. That way we don't forget mm -hmm. that that's a separate thing. Yep. Um, okay. And anything else on this spreadsheet, Matt? I, I think this is a little bit cleaner. Um, yeah. So then the only other thing, but we can kind of save it for later, was if you see row 61 at the moment, there is SPDX approved licenses. And this was a yeah. metric that we had started. I was just kind of going through. Yeah, okay. Um, I see what you're saying about the, the comments in there. Um, I think the see dimension that we want to do is see that it, these are sort of common licenses. So rather than saying approved, but basically, you know, um, what we're looking for is people aren't creating more license fragmentation. Okay. By a lot of uh, things. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm good with removing the word approved. What is the word? Defined, registered. Defined, registered, or read, yeah, defined, or, yeah, or, or you know, SPDX license list, you know. If re yeah, re that's reg it. Yeah, SPDX re registered, and what percentage of all the license references, uh, mm -hmm. you know, are standard as opposed to things that are someone's personal pet, um, corporate oh. license. And then I thought maybe later after Sean talks about his MVP stuff. If we mm -hmm. have time, we could go back to that because I think it's pretty close to mm -hmm. being ready for release. And that can so that can be the one one of the ones we work on. Be, and I have just, it's in it's in the agenda. So mm -hmm. the yeah, if we go, oops, that's not the agenda. Um, okay, so well, here, question for you, are your just or just account really isn't all that useful. What you really want is how many are not registered or what's the percentage that are registered? Should we capture that now or is that just? Oh, now would be the time to do it. Because yep. if, if a metric isn't useful, just as a pure count, like you're saying, David? Yeah, okay. yeah I mean, a big project. Yeah, we, we don't actually care if they have 100 SPDX registered licenses. What we're really worried about are the ones that aren't. <laughs> Just right. add a percentage to the end. That's all I did. Uh, right. Yeah, or or, 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 maybe... or reverse the sense of it and make it non SPDX approved license or registered licenses. Yes. Okay. Non -SPDX, uh, percent like uh, percent of licenses not. How's this? Percent licenses not SPDX registered. Let me let me type that in because that's uh, mm -hmm. doing it in the spreadsheet. Or, or 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 you know, we can use the SPDX as a proxy for uh, common. Lead to you know commonly cool. found licenses, which is a criteria for getting added to the list. Instead of having SPDX directly there. Yeah, and we just use that, we do that uh, on uncommon licenses. Yeah. Or if it's SPDX registered, it's considered common. It is considered common. I'm almost wondering rather something like, you know, um, or maybe or a number of packages. Like what we're, what we're to, uh, um, license fragmentation or something like that as a way of summarizing it is in my head right now. Sorry, I just need to get a little bit of food I've not eaten yet today. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure that the problem, the problem so with, is that just, how do you measure that? So I'm, just I'm as, not, an, as no, an example. I think def, uh, how we measure it, I think I'm completely in agreement with it, which is, you know, the percentage that aren't on the license list. So uh, but I'm just sort of thinking about the marketing of it. So uh, the, the way it shows up in Augur right now is no assertion. Okay. It's a license, but it, uh, it's not on the list and we call that yep. no assertion. Right. Um, and that, how about how about just number of packages with uncommon licenses? Well, number uh, packages. Yeah, uh, like I say, we've got source files and we've got package level here. Right. What's pet? Is tell what? How, 
I'm, I, I feel done asking this question, but what is package level? So, but like when you import a package? So, so let, let's say you created an S bomb from your built component. Mm -hmm. So as you're busy build, you know, as you're doing your build, you're generating your S bomb, which is right. I think where we want to get the ecosystem to go. Um, of those components, um, you know, which ones have licensing at that level? They're making up the system because you're bringing in your dependency chain. I see. You're doing your build. So, so uh, Zephyr is a, is a project, but it does import but, some like other I said, packages. If you, so like Steve Winslow has been, has got a nice little hack project that he's been working on um, with inside CMake and Zephyr uh -huh. to automatically generate the bill of materials of the binary for Zephyr down to the source file level. I see. So we'll have nice clean information on actually what is really in a binary, which we really don't have right now. And I'm and that's different the than the folk on this topic as well. And that's different than what's in the repository, which is what I'm showing here. Yeah, you're showing the source S bomb. Right. There's also a build a built a built artifact S bomb, and the security guys are mostly talking in the built artifact world, okay. not in the source world. And we've come mostly from the source world. <laughs> it's true. It's true. The licensing side of it, which is a risk as well. True. And so there's some interesting discussions going on on the um, fact that CISOs don't talk to OSPOs right now very well. And so, David, that's something that you and I need to chat about, I think. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the list of people who don't talk to each other is uh, long and painful. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so I had a proposed uh, retitle, which is long, maybe we don't need all of it, but you know, number of packages with unknown or uncommon licenses. I mean, you could claim that if it's unknown, we'll assume it's uncommon, but um, right. you know, it's basically how many packages mm -hmm. do we need to worry about the licensing? Yeah, um, just being because yeah. we have no idea what's yeah. going on. Matt, yeah. can you I take us unknown. for a minute here? I have to, I have to mute myself. I'm sorry, I have a yeah. family thing, sure. Yeah, um, Kate, I'm sorry. Let me, talk, let me talk through a little bit with you. Um, sure. I wouldn't say that they're unknown, but it is, um, I'd say not common. Well, no, there are packages where it is not known. What the oh yeah, but is. there are also, but listing it that way, um, people may know it, it's there, it's just a proprietary license. Right, okay, so if, if we say uncommon, that would include unknown? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how, all right. So how's this? If if it is if the license is unknown, mm -hmm. uh, presume uncommon for mm -hmm. this for purposes of this metric. Mm -hmm. We can put that in the description, David. Yeah. Right, right. But the, I, yeah. I, I, there's two different yeah. issues. The give me a title and what does it mean. <laughs> Totally. No, I get it. Yep. So, the, you were just you were writing what the what it mean means part. Right. Right. I, I, well, I'm I'm bouncing back and forth. The the you know, we're 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 making the sausage. <laughs> yeah. What's so the, right uh, now, yeah. right oh. now in the title in the document, I see it's number of packages with uncommon licenses. I'm just trying to keep up with David and Kate. Yeah, so and how then, about, editing. we're proposing ah, instead yeah. of SPDX approved licenses, which we don't okay. think is the right thing to measure. We think the right thing to measure is number of packages with uncommon licenses. And if it's speed, if, if the license is SPDX registered, it's considered common. If we can't figure out what the license is at all, we're going to assume it's uncommon. And the notion here is higher number equal bigger risk. Mm -hmm. Dwayne, does that make sense to you too? I know you just want to be quiet right now, but I'm, I'm pulling you in since I know you. That's all things. right. I'm, I just have to contact switch back again. I was only about half tuned in. So sorry. <laughs> My apologies to that. That's I'm all right. Um, uh, go for like it. Say, you know, when we start seeing uncommon licenses or things like that, I, I, I consider it risky, more risky. Mm -hmm. If it's sort of like standard licenses that have shown up on the license, SPDX license list, we, you know, people roughly know how to deal with them. Right. And if there's, you know, things that are sort of like, you know, copyright, Intel, all rights reserved type of deal or, 
you know, company or copyright indeed, all rights reserved. Right. You know, that would be something I would consider a risk factor in a, an open source project. Although would that be an uncommon license? Actually not common, but like, I, I mean like Indies license, not, not copyright, my, my bad speak. No, 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 I, I, I get it. So uh, I, I heard the part where we were saying, where David, you said you didn't think that SPDX, are they using a license defined by SPDX is, is the thing you want to measure? Because I think there are a lot of projects that don't. Um, projects no, no, that, they, they, no that's, that's a, a lot of projects do. And therefore counting up, oh, look, there are 300 projects that packages that we use with SPDX approved licenses. Uh, what does that tell me? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. If I, if you tell me, hey, we mate, you've got 10 packages where it's that license has never been registered with SPDX. Mm -hmm. Now I'm worried. What the heck is that? Um, so Kate, your, your question, the thing you were asking if, I, if it made sense to me is, does the number, it, uh, would I be concerned if I saw the number of funky licenses? Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. I was looking for. Right. So, so for so for some additional context, like part of part of one of the things I've had to do recently with our SCA tool is take this mm -hmm. giant bucket of these licenses need review licenses and manually mm -hmm. go through and figure out what what they're meant to be. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what's typical for SCA vendors um, who provide this information, but that number was quite large when I first saw it, um, where it mm -hmm. could quite figure yep. it out. So, we, we, um, we, we are totally get that problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. actually an OSI project, I don't know what its status is, where Clearly they've been trying. I'm sorry? Clearly defined. That's it. It's it's an active project and it's it's a it's a good data set and it's an actively curated data set as well. Um, there's I don't want to derail us on on discussion of the problem, but um, yes, is the answer to your question, Kate. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. We just you know serve Sophia. How does it resolve? You know, does it resonate for you? It does. Um, and I think it's looking at their website. It seems like this is something that you could easily check. Um, for both either registered in SPDX as well as whether or not it's recognized by the OSI. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now that would be a different number. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with reporting both numbers or combining. Sorry. Hello? I'm back. Just hey, sorry. Sorry, I'm we sorry about going. that. Well, as far as I know, every single OSI approved license is on the SP is registered on the SPDX list yes including yeah i mean that's that's been a long-term project as far as i know even all the ones that the fsf has identified yep. are also yep and we've we've got them pretty much classified so. yeah so um, i so i think if you've got an spdx registered you know you got the common ones now the question is do we also want to mention osi approval or not we could in the metric like what constitutes? Yeah, if we do OSI, OSI approval, we'll need to do FSF approval. Otherwise, we'll get flack. Yeah, and that would be fine. Oh. I'm just, uh, yeah, sorry. I'm just, I think we, those we, are two different I metrics. have scars. We have, <laughs> yes. a, we have a metric called OSI approved licenses. We, do. we probably okay. should add an FSF or free, free software approved licenses or FSF approved so, yeah. licenses. So, yeah, OK. okay. Percent that... OSI approved licenses. There we go. And see, that's a that's more important than a count. I don't care about the count. I would care about a percentage or the number that weren't. Well, I think the, I like the way they've done it right there. But then I guess I had influences. <laughs> ah, yeah. yeah, I think you're the designer, Kate. Yeah, I know. So uh, that, that, that the way it's there is useful to me. I, now, I, I love the, the details. But to me, that that top number who, whatever crazy person did this, I, I don't know, yeah. that, that, that focus on the percentage of mm -hmm. what was approved. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So we can uh, percent. But, you know, like I say, it, what might be make some sense is to do something like that with the FSF, free software licenses. I what, think should I be, what should I be sharing right now? What you're sharing I think this is another metric. Yeah, it's another, it's another metric to add onto the table, I think. The okay. FSF one. Yep. And uh, okay. the, well, do we already have the OSI one? We've got the OSI yes. one. Yes. Yeah, the OSI approved is actually a released metric. Yep. So. so it's just number. FSF approved. FSF approved licenses. Yep. 
I got it right there. And it should be easy enough to generate because the same data coming out of the SPDX license list API should be able to give it to you. And does somebody have a link for what the list of FSS? At, look I'm, I'm, yeah, I, there's a website I visited many times. F FSS approved, license. approved licenses. Also listed on the SP. SPDX license list, yeah. yeah. And they have it as a nice table where it's FSS and OSI. It's, yep. I kind of like when it's all together. Maybe yeah. we, we, we had to do a lot of work to get everyone to reconcile. So we made so a then, <laughs> So then if, if we include the FSF approved licenses similar to the OSI approved licenses, um, does, does row, um, 61, the one that started out as SPDX approved licenses that has slowly morphed into number of packages with uncommon license. Do we, do well, we roll uh, that back I, to no, where no, no, we started? No, 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 no. I, I think okay. I'd say um, okay. it's either pack, yeah. well, it could be packages or it could be files. So that's where we have to, we have to be a little careful, but, but you know, ah. right? Because these other ones are at the file level and now suddenly we're going up to package level. Do, do um, we want at the package level, at the file level instead? Oh, good question. So package level, package levels. Well, we're doing source right now. We don't have a lot yeah. of builds at this point in time. We will be adding builds. Yeah. So keep it at the source for right now. Okay. It's basically, you know, source files with uncommon licenses, maybe is the title. Would that mean that OSI and FSS, I cannot say that correctly. I know, I had the hardest time too. FSF. Um, FSF. You you uh, practice over twenty years. You'll get yeah. it. <laughs> it is like two sort of like nested ways to look for uncommon license. Yeah. So like when you went when when um, Sean was just showing us the example of the OSI one. Yeah, Sean can find that again. Or maybe I, I wouldn't have closed that. Right. Uh, probably. Close it. Oh. I closed it. I don't know. Oh, and there it is. Yeah. There it is. Okay. This here. Right. So the non OSI approved, when we start looking into those, click on those right now. Uh, it opens up a JSON file. Since right. Everything's JSON so cool. And this is a list of the ones right. that are used. So are... Those, those are potentially the ones that would be showing prominently if they're not on the SPDX list as well. The one you know would be removing from that set that it, that Sean's bringing up in JSON. Um, yeah, those that are on the SPDX that. list and the ones that are not there, you know, are fragments or things like that. There'd be a lot of the license refs and things that people need further investigation. And so I think higher number is you know. Oh wait a minute! More... You know what? I'm, I realize I'm not showing. I'm not showing this. Yeah. There. That's the. So th these are not these. So. You know, these are all ones that are on the SPX license list. I think it, in some senses, then it's your unknowns and uh, nothing defined because those are all on the list. So, but it, do people get where I'm so, trying to head or should I try again? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I think, I think, well, what you're saying is enumerating the non-OSI approved licenses and enumerating the non-FSF approved licenses are two components of those metrics. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think what you've got here is is, is, is fine for OSI and the non-OSI approved that, and doing the same thing for SFF, mirroring it, okay. all good. I'm just saying that for the places where you can't figure it out. Right. Those are the things we're going to want to capture in this other one. Okay. So it's sort of like, you know, IBM's license or, you know, um, Red Hat's this uncommon variant or something like that. One. Yeah, the yeah, uncommon by, license by the way, one is the ones that are not on the list. By the way, FYI, and I see a similar comment, the, um, the CI best practices badge, if you go look at what does it mean to be floss, uh, basically, the license must be approved in one of the following lists, OSI, FSF, Debian main, or good license by Fedora. And Alyssa wrote in chat, uh, those 
plus or minus the Fedora one, I think. Oh no, she wrote the Fedora one as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those yeah the, the that, that's, sorry, I know I'm just jumping in and I'm, I'm learning a lot from you all, um, but uh, those, those were the foundations for the Indeed FOSS Contributor Fund. And, and I, I come off and I come from the OpenStreetMap space where the open uh, DBL license like isn't on a lot of lists, um, but well, we... it, 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 like I say, if, if you want to add on the list, it's easy enough to add. Just open pull, you know, I pull do a pull request, mm. or I'll happy to coach you if you want to have some licenses added. <laughs> Problem. It, it's just they need to be common and they need to be in use. Right. But we're not, you know, we're not trying to. <laughs> we're trying to make it easy for people as opposed to proliferate it so big that it's a pain. Mm. And the, the flag is really for like mm -hmm. OS. Okay. Oh, I won't. Do That's we a... need, should we, should so, uh, Matt, are you raising your hand? Go yes. Ahead. So just a question. This is like for, for Kate and oh. David. So the OSI approved licenses metric is fine as is and you recommend that we also put forward an fsf approved license metric kind of almost a mirror image of the osi that, I, I'm, but, I'm saying yeah completely a mirror image just do it that okay way. so then full stop on that mm -hmm. and then we do not create a metric which is called spdx approved licenses is that no. correct no that's not that's, correct that, that is, that not is correct. a different thing <laughs> that would that be there's, a third there's two license? Different issues well, here. we cha we changed the SPDX approved one to number of packages with uncommon licenses. And, no, and, and, and right now, I think we we take it back to be at the file level. There, there's and, a proposal on the floor to switch it to file level, but otherwise, number of files with uncommon licenses, I yeah. think, is still very but, much on the table. Because that's, there's that's two totally fine. I, but I didn't even get there yet. So oh. so we do have the OSI approved licenses. We have. The second metric, which is FSF approved licenses, approved licenses. done. Mm -hmm. And 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 then the next, how about this? Let me phrase it this way. What is the next metric in the line of metrics that we should think about? Um, uncommon, to, presence of uncommon licenses. licenses. Yeah. Okay, so presence the one that we have in six in 61 right now. Yeah. Well, we want to change That's, that to files right now? Kate? That, that was the pitch. Or, okay. or, or just say presence of uncommon licenses and let's you know not put the scope. Well, you want to level. count. You want to count as something. Well, How hmm. about we just so, name it uncommon licenses and yeah. put it count in the description and the filters and the, the thing. I like that, Vinod. That works for me. Well, I, I don't. Let me explain why. If there's one package that has an uncommon license, I would say not good, pretty normal. If there's 300, I'm worried. Yeah, and but not... there be there be the number the numbers will be reported. Yeah. The same way they were reported on the other ones. So within this metric then that Sean is showing, uh -huh. was showing. I was showing. There we go. Is the is the data collection strategy, Sean, if you scroll down. So basically each one of these metrics basically has a see down there with the three hashtags where it says data yeah, collection strategies. Is this per file or per yes. package? Yes. So file. with, with we make, we make it, we make it, make it with the same, like I said, we, we may as well make this consistent with the other metrics and then revisit the whole package level when we're talking yeah. about dependencies. So with, this, so with this, with the determination of the number of packages with uncommon licenses or the number of files with uncommon licenses, would this determination be made by checking against the SPDX yeah. list, the, SPDX. the OSI list, whatever the, the lists SPDX are? The, list. for, the, for, the the for when there's no assertion, mm -hmm. it, realistically, your number of uncommon licenses is your number of no assertions, which is what Sean okay. said initially. Yep. So the only thing okay. that this metric checks against is the SPDX list. Right. But we, right. we don't need to s name it specifically. Our, our notion here is uh, it's the, un it's I would, the fact I would that put they're not maybe registered. A, yeah, we, we can say they're not registered, but basically we're, we can be explicit that we're using the SPDX list as presence on the SPDX list as an indication of a common license. That's fine. 
cool. that can be found that's, in open source, which is a definition for the license list. That's criteria. Helpful. Thank you. Well, there are SPDX licenses that are not open source software licenses. Yes. So, but there would still be. Yes, there's there still be common, common. For instance. Right. When I say common and open source software is what I meant, not, yeah. you know, common and, you know, publicly available software too. Ah, yeah, okay. Visible so on GitHub. Want, okay. Okay. So you want it to, so if it's in the SPDX registry, but it's not open source, you still would want to include it in that? Um, if it is, if it's, yeah, like I say, what we're trying to do with this is um, have an indicator of, you know, problematic license proliferation. Or okay, let, of, let, me, know, let me get down to brass not... tacks. Let's say that I've got okay. CC um, ND, okay? Common, uh, Creative mm -hmm. Commons, no der no derivatives. It's not open source. Yep. It is, a, it is yep. a common license. Would you include it in the count? Yep. You would? Yes, it's on the SPDX license list. Okay, well, all right. So it is registered and therefore you would, you would in, that would be a common one. It would not be listed under the uncommon. So it would not go on the count, yeah. All right, great, all right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's understandable. <laughs> Just we, we got to be clear about it. <laughs> so could you say that again so I capture it? There's always the conversation between <laughs> David and Kate, and then there's the sentence that I need. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, let's can... see here. Well, let's, in fact, maybe we can type it for you. Uh, so I, I think it comes down to, I don't see, or you don't, okay, I don't have the actual, what are you looking the, for? Uh, yeah, that? the spreadsheet. Yeah, why don't, I, why don't I just open up the spreadsheet and capture what I think we just discussed, and then you can laugh at me and tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> that would be helpful. Thank you. I won't laugh at you. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's all right. Yeah. Uh, ooh, whoops. Ah. There's the spreadsheet. Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, I got it. The, I, I, it logged me in under my Gmail instead of my Linux Foundation, which is, uh, confuses me for a second. All right, so let's see here. SPDX, it's not there anymore. How about Uncommon? That's not there either. Oh, okay, you are not, you are, okay, I'm, I think I'm in the wrong spreadsheet. Uh, current are you in the right tab? Look at the tabs at the bottom. Uh, the I I risk e Click on the risk, risk tab. Okay, SPDX document. It's under its here we go number of uncommon 61. licenses yes okay um I, I think number of uh number of files with is what we're uh, uh, you know totally if we can fine. see it at the source file then that you know and david where it just says work on for release you can type right in that so i already did oh <laughs> Job. <laughs> <laughs> number of files with uncommon licenses <clears throat> and for uncommon we mean it doesn't have an spdx value it may not be open source but now i realize that we've got fsf approved but is that really the count we care about again i would want to know what's not approved or what's um like I say if it, what they've got is they've got those that are and aren't already in the counts and they've got a percentage and so the ones where the percentage is low that's when it's you know like I say if they're if it's not sitting in high 90s that's a an indicator to look at it Okay, so when we say FSF approved licenses or OSI approved licenses, there's a that's a count, but then there's an implication that you'll capture the percentages as well. Yes. Yeah. In the metric. Yep. In the metric. Okay. In in that case, maybe we don't need th that definition of number of. Maybe we just need files with uncommon licenses. Yeah, that would be I'd fine. say. Yeah. Yep. Realistically, I'm fine with just taking it down to uncommon licenses. Yeah, the problem is I don't know what unit you're measuring, packages or files. Yeah, but that we can we can we can put that in the metric, and then it's symmetric with FSF and OSI, which are both file level. Right now. All right. I guess as long as it's defined somewhere. Even though we got it there. <laughs> All 
All right, we now where is this there. Texas going to find this glorious thing? <laughs> Short is good. Concise is good. Makes me happy. Yeah. Concise is good unless there's a unless it's unclear. I'm fine. Okay. We just we get now we got to make sure it's defined clearly in the details. Yep. Yep. So where are these details? I just put it the in link the, on the, the link. The link on the side of the spreadsheet. Yep. Yep. Or the spreadsheet. And that's where to put all the writing. All right. Now. The file license declaration, is that, is that not just license coverage or how is that different? What part are you reading, Kate? I'm just sc scrolling down below SPDX document. Well, this, okay, let me take a look. Yeah, because I would have thought that would have been license coverage by its name, but maybe I'm missing a concept. Below SPDX document, can you hide? Oh. 64. Highlight where you are. Oh, you're on sure. the spreadsheet, I'm sorry. My apologies, that one. My, my, I figured I could give David time to go type before I commented gotcha. there. there. Final All right, operations. I am currently playing in uncommon licenses. <laughs> Good man. Great. All right, SPS then, registered licenses on the license list. Licenses known, presume uncommon for purpose of this metric. Yep, there we go. To your point, um, Kate, then that could probably go away. I think is yep. kind of where, just because yep. I think we're capturing it with these three metrics now. Yep, and the I also OSI. think the comparison of known licenses is now our uncommon license one. Which, what row is that? One below. Comparison of known licenses, okay. All right, I am intentionally doing suggested so you can Thank accept you. or reject. Yeah, that's right, okay. Okay, now this is not, uh, Uncommon doesn't have anything to do with open source. That's... Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, licenses that are found in publicly visible source code. How about that? Or, you know, data file, you know, certain files, things like that. But So I, I had this idea that we were just going to wrap up the SPDX license metric in like five minutes, but little did I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Nothing's easy. I know better than that. <laughs> what can I say? What can we say here? <laughs> no, this is great. Thank you. For I, think, the I think we were fine. It's something quite useful, actually. <laughs> I like this one, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh -huh. Note that these may or may not be open source software licenses. Just so people know, this is where David's working right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, now that this metric has taken the turn or going the direction it is, there'll probably be a fair amount of cleanup that needs to be done just because I think it was angled differently than it is now, <laughs> which is cool. Spring cleaning again for the win. Yeah, yeah this is great. Mm -hmm. So thank you. I know we didn't talk about dependencies today, but I thought there were a few of these license related items that or at least one <laughs> that well, turned out to be more than one. We cleaned up dependency as well a bit as well. So there was yep, a progress. So that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, the one thing is, do you want to move line 29 down underneath dependencies? Line 29. Mm -hmm. Oh, so the thought was is that this is now captured in just the detail that's now in here. Okay. Okay. That we would just delete 29 and I can do that. Yep, that's fine then. I just I'm I'm in spring cleaning mode, obviously. I like it. Thanks for catching that though. There you mm -hmm. go. All right. Well we are approaching the end of our meeting time. Mm. The risk license. All right, but we have one, Uncommon Licenses. <laughs> and FSF approved licenses too. 
Oh yeah. Yeah, actually, okay. actually, I'll give myself an action item just to kind of <laughs> copy and paste the OSI one at least to bring forward uh, next time, and that would be good. That shouldn't be too much trouble. Yeah, I mean, and you've got the FSF list there, so. Yep. It should be and you can query it automatically from the SPDX license list as well. Now the SPDX the folks, API. they keep track of the Fedora or Debian ones or just the OSI and FSF? Um, there's actually spreadsheets because we've been trying to get the Fedora ones all moved into a common base and Fedora um, is not specific in a few cases. It causes problems. Oh, that's surprising. Mm, they just refer to things um, as BSD or BSD-like in a few places. Oh, okay. I, I, I think, think they were trying. And, to and that, is, that has been one of the things that, you know, we're trying to work with the community to find the cleanup such that they can just, you know, line up with okay. and use, use some of the tooling that's out there. Got it. Got and it. That also plays in with what Yocto is encountering too. Yocto has some interesting licenses. There. Well, everyone, we are at the end of our time. Thank you very yeah. much for the spring cleaning and the movement forward on, on these metrics. So that was great. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Thursday, Friday weekend. Bye, everybody. Okay. Fantastic. Bye. Bye, Sean. Hope everything's okay. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>